Hey everybody! Well, in today's video we're going to cover the process of taking a finished board or layout all the way through the ordering process. And I'm going to be ordering this actual PCB through one of my favorite PCB manufacturers, uh, OSHpark.com, so this should be interesting. Alright, so we've got this board here which is all finished. Uh, I've gone ahead, I've done the board review, everything looks great, I'm happy with it, and I'm ready to order. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating um, some files that uh, OSH Park knows how to read and that basically define uh, how the board should be uh, manufactured. And those board, those files are called uh, Gerber files. So you've probably heard of that before. And uh, these particular files, you get one per layer in the board. And you can see in DipTrace, I've got kind of this layer stack over here all the way from uh, an assembly layer all the way down to a board outline. Now some of these are involved in the manufacturing process, some not so much. Um, but just to go over them real quick, uh, the top assembly layer, uh, that's a good layer for adding notes. Let's say I was going to get these assembled by an assembly house, I might uh, come in here and add a, uh, a text note um, saying, I don't know, don't populate headers for example. And that can be saved here and that's just a text note that won't appear on the board or affect the manufacturing process in any way. Uh, when we start generating the Gerber files we're actually going to not include that one just so we don't confuse the process. But that's what it's for. Um, top silk is of course the top silk screen of the board. Uh, in my color setup here that's the green so that'll be all the writing that you see up here and so on and so forth. Uh, next layer down here is top mask. Um, this is the solder mask, um, which doesn't really display in dip trace here, uh, but this is going to be uh, the essentially the cutouts in the solder mask uh, that will go around all the different copper features on the board. Uh, top paste is going to be another layer that we're probably not going to include to the fab. Uh, the, the paste layer is it's a little bit bigger than each of the copper features uh, for the surface mount parts and that kind of dictates uh, or would be used for getting a solder paste stencil. We have of course the top layer which is the top copper layer and uh, this being a two layer board there's only going to be two copper layers top and bottom and then bottom would be the bottom copper layer and we can flip over here and take a look at the bottom of the board. Nothing too crazy. Uh, bottom paste, just like the top paste. Bottom mask, again, just like the top mask. Uh, bottom silk, bottom assembly, and then board outline. Uh, the board outline file itself is this one here, and this basically just defines uh, the edges of the board. Uh, so when the uh, fabricator goes through, uh, they'll know uh, essentially where to cut out our board. All right. So those are our layers, and what we're going to do now is export them into Gerber files. So I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to go to Export, and Gerber. Now, DipTrace is, is really convenient with OSH Park uh, in the export process, in that um, I find that I don't really need to change anything uh, when exporting. The default settings, they work good for me. Um, of course, your mileage may vary. Always recommend double checking, but for me, this seems to work out pretty good. Um, you can go through here and you can actually preview the different layers uh, to get an idea of what that particular layer might look like. So for example, if I want to look at the top copper layer, I can click on top here. I can click preview and that is exactly what the Gerber file um, essentially defines for that particular layer. So this could be useful for looking for any um, you know, defects or anything uh, that's not rendering the way that you would expect it to. Um, Right now, just looking at this, everything's looking pretty cool. I don't have any issues with that. Uh, I also use it sometimes to view the, uh, let's say, silkscreen layer. So we can make sure that our text is looking pretty good on there. I don't really see any issues. i got a couple labels running into this here, but not a huge deal. I can still read everything fine. Uh, we can look at our top mask layer. Looking good. Oh, wait, hold on. Actually, if we look at our top mask, I do have some text here, and it looks like it collides with this, uh, I think it's a capacitor. Good thing we checked that. We can go ahead and fix that real quick. Now, I like to kind of, I suppose we can say, cheat a little bit and use uh, objects on the mask layer for text sometimes. Now, the only challenging part of that is 
if you see these two little squares that are half showing up, tip trace doesn't really render that all too nicely, uh, in so much as saying at all. Um, if I move it off the design, you can see that it does render. Uh, let's move this up here. But once you let go, yeah, it disappears. There's that. Put that there. Okay, let's take a peek at that again. This is why it's always a good good idea to validate. And we'll zoom in a bit. Okay, that's much better. We're not uh, covering anything that. Uh, top paste, and that should be fine. Look at our bottom layer real quick. Yeah, looking pretty good. Uh, let's look at the bottom mask. Not a whole lot going on down there. Bottom silk screen. Now here's a real important note. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have any kind of silk screen markings on the bottom of the board, so as such, there's no data in the bottom silk screen file. When we get ready to zip together all these files to send them to uh, OSH Park, we'll want to make sure that we're not including that file uh, along with that zip. Uh, if we do, it might not uh, be rendered properly. Could throw an error. Uh, bottom assembly, I'm not using the assembly layers. Uh, board outline, here's that outline of my board. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see I've been playing around with rounded corners in this design. Ought to look pretty sharp. Uh, there's a board file, uh, which is basically the, the inside of the board outline. Uh, top dimension, uh, this would be a layer that would be used if I had uh, drawn any dimensions on the board. I don't have any, so they're not going to show up here. Um, this is another type of file, uh, top dimension and bottom dimension, that don't impact uh, the manufacturer of the board in any way, so we won't include those in the zip file either. Okay, so we've gone through, we've checked all of our layers, everything looks great now. Good thing we caught that error on the top mask, uh, that'll save us uh, some wasted boards. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and export these. Now the easiest way to do this is to click on export all. If you just click export, it's only going to export that one layer that's highlighted. So we'll do export all. It's going to ask where we want to save it. And I am going to put this right on my desktop. And we're just going to go through and we're going to hit save a whole bunch of times. It's going through the different layers um, and saving them with their default file names, which is fine because OSH Park is quite happy with that. Okay, those are all done. I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're not quite done yet because uh, so far all we've exported are um, files which define the board uh, layers, but we haven't exported the drill file. Yeah, it would be kind of nice if our board had holes in it. All right, um, so what I did was I went over to File, Export, and an NC Drill. This is just the format uh, of the file, just like a Gerber is one kind of format. Drill files that we're going to use are an NC Drill. Again, I'll use the default settings. Diptrace seems to know best here. And I'll go ahead and hit Export All. Now, another difference that you're going to see here is the top and bottom layers are going to be combined into a single file. We're not going to have two files in this case. So we'll go ahead and click Export All, and we're going to get a pop-up. Basically it's just telling us that um, the tools for these particular drills or, or drill hits uh, haven't been specified yet. Do we want DipTrace to do that for us? Works for me. I'm going to click Yes. It goes ahead and does that and it creates this through.drl file, and that's our drill. So we're going to save that. And we're done. All right, so now if I minimize this and open up my Gerber's file folder, here we can see all the different files uh, that were created. So what I'm going to do now is go through these, and we're going to pick out all the ones that we know we don't need. Now, we know we don't need a board file because that was the contents. Uh, I'm not using that in this particular one. Uh, we do want the board outline. We do want the bottom. That's our bottom copper. We don't need bottom assembly because there's nothing there and it doesn't affect the manufacturer. We don't need bottom dimension. We do want bottom mask. We don't need bottom paste because there's not going to be any uh, uh, solder paste stencil created for this. Um, 
but I, sometimes I like to keep those in there just for my own future reference if I ever want to have a, a stencil made. They're all in the same place. Now here's the gotcha. Remember, I don't have anything on my bottom silk layer, so I need to include that in the ones that I'm going to delete. Through is my drill file. We definitely want that. We want the top copper. We don't want top assembly or top dimension. We're going to keep top mask. We're going to keep top paste. And we're going to keep top silk. Okay. Right click. I'm going to delete those because I don't need them. All right. And there's the files that I want. Now we're going to select those. And we're going to put them in a zip file. There we go. Gerberfiles.zip. All right. On to OSHpark.com we go. All right. And if you've never been to OSHpark.com uh, before, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just... Uh, follow along the uh, the menus and so forth that you get to to, uh, to create your account and uh, you'll be fine. Now, I'm already logged in, uh, so we can go ahead and just get started. We got this nice button right in the front here. We're going to click to get started. We're going to select a file on my computer, and that's going to be my zip file. I'm going to open that up. Now, while this is processing, we can give the project a name. This is my PIC24F. 32 uh, KA302 development board. This is a description. Um, development board. And we'll just sit here while this is processing. Okay, and we can see the screen has changed here. A preview rendering of our boards has uh, popped up. We still have the opportunity to adjust our project name and description if you wanted to. I'm happy with what we've got in there so far. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit continue. We're going to get uh, some closer views on the previews that will be more helpful to uh, determining if everything looks good. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And here we are. Now on this page, this is really our last chance to take a look at what we've got so far and make sure that everything looks good to go. Now OSH Park is Kind enough that they got these renders looking pretty darn close to how the boards are going to look when we get them. Um, so we can see our nice rounded edges are in the top, so on and so forth. Now this board top is this is kind of a combination of all the different uh, layers that could be visible from the top. So it's a good place for us to take a peek, look at our silk screen, make sure everything looks pretty good there. I'm liking what I'm seeing. You can see that uh, those mask layers I moved before. Uh, so we can make sure that those aren't uh, covering any text or any pads. It's looking pretty good. It's a little close to this label, but I think we'll be okay. Here's the bottom of the board. Looking good. Not really expecting anything on there. That's fine. Uh, the board outline. Yep, it's a rectangle. Uh, the bottom layer of the board, the bottom copper. Yeah, that looks good. The bottom solder mask. Nothing too special drills. Here's an important one. Definitely a good one to keep an eye on and make sure it looks like it's uh, been recognized and renders properly. You know, some things to look for. We have, uh, for example, uh, some vias in the design. If I scroll up, you can see right there. There's one, there's one, there's there. So we got four. We can make sure those rendered properly. And they definitely did. Actually, a couple more than four. Uh, top layer, everything's looking pretty good over there top solder mask. One important thing to look out uh, for here is just to make sure that your uh, your mask uh, openings or, or apertures are uh, sufficient such that uh, say you have a uh, an SOIC in here you still have got some mask between the pins. That's always important to help us prevent uh, solder bridging and so forth and it looks like everything is fine there. Here's our top silk screen layer. One last chance to make sure everything looks good there. It looks good. And all right, let's approve and continue. All right, now the fun part. So we can look, we can see that our design here, based on its size and current prices, is going to cost us $10.05 per set of three. Uh, we can order however many we'd like in increments of three. So I can get three, I can get six, I can get nine, I can get 27, I can get a whole bunch, as long as it's a number divisible by three. Um, I think I'm okay with three at this point. Uh, I want to test this design, make sure everything looks good uh, before I go too crazy. 
uh, I've got enough coasters accumulated already. So, um, shipping address looks good. Uh, country's good. Shipping, we have a couple of different options here. Uh, I'm in the U.S., so I can choose shipping uh, free. Uh, I can do priority mail or express mail. I've had great results with the free shipping, so I'll stick with that. And I will click order it. All right, my order is in, but I haven't paid for it yet. And that's really the last step that we got to go through here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll scroll down. I get two options, PayPal, or I can use Google Checkout. I think I'll use Google at this point. Go ahead and sign in. All right, nothing crazy here. Standard kind of order summary. Got the price of my boards for my set of three. Uh, total price looks good. And we'll go ahead and we're going to hit uh, place order now. And that's it. My order has been placed. And I am done. I ought to be getting an email pretty soon telling me that uh, uh, I guess my payment was received. Um, there's my email from Google telling me that I sent the payment. Uh, other emails that I can expect in the near future is I'll get an email uh, when the board is added to the panel, when it goes off to the uh, the lab. And then uh, yeah, in a couple of weeks or so, once everything's back from the fabricator, I will get an email saying it's back. And then I believe there's one more email that tells us when it's shipped. So they definitely keep us well up to date. It's very, very nice. Um, but that's it. Our process is done. Hopefully that was uh, pretty straightforward. I know this uh, couple of steps there to, to work through, but nothing too, too crazy. Um, but that's it. All right. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be back next time with some more Dip Trace fun.